friend, Roger Christofferson, here again with another First Listen Review. And we are going to be babbling about Skid Row and their first official live release ever called Live in London. I know it's hard to believe they never did anything with Sebastian on vocals as official. I know there was a couple uh, deluxe things out there, I think. Uh, Subhuman Race, I think, had a, a deluxe edition with a live concert attached to it. But that's kind of, it was just a bonus thing. This is their first you know, official standalone live album. And uh, of course, what singer are they on now? Six, seven, I don't know. But uh, this is their first uh, they've done here. And um, it was, I'm sure a lot of people were interested to hear what they were gonna sound like. Uh, you know, having, you know, not having Sebastian in the band here, which I'm sure so a lot of people like myself have checked out, you know, looking at the videos on, uh, <clears throat> on uh, you know, YouTube. There's tons of them out there. Uh, I had you know, watched all the ones with Lizzie Hale as well. Um, no offense to Lizzie or anything like that, but I really liked Eric singing in this band. I really thought their last album was great. I was I'm a huge fan of this band's. I mean, I was pretty young when they first came out, and you know the first two albums were just amazing. I mean, everybody wanted to have a singer like Sebastian. My band was no different. We were looking for our Sebastian. Uh, started losing me a little bit with Subhuman Race, and uh, then I don't know what they did after that. They kind of went down some weird path where they just forgot how to write good songs or something. I don't know, but uh, my little opinion there, probably uh, <laughs> unneeded, but <laughs> there it is. Anyway, uh, then you know, they came back with uh, their latest album, The Gang's All Here, and I, I really, really enjoyed that album. I thought it was kind of like back in their earlier style of things. And so checking out the song listing on this album, uh, it's pretty much just the first couple albums and you know a couple from the new release. So I mean, I guess they know, you know, where their bread and butter is. There, they knew what the, you know, people wanted to hear. There was actually a couple of little extra ones thrown in here, but I'm just going to kind of run down through it real quick. Uh, you know, kicks in with "Slave of the Grind." I mean, what a way to kick an album. You know, any concert and that that song is just you know boss of the walls right from the start I really like that song uh, you know with Eric he's got an attitude of his own I mean I don't know what Sebastian sang with like this this passion and attitude that you know uh, you just can't you couldn't match so like, he's just one of those ultimate vocalists uh, and I've heard a lot of stuff he's done lately Unfortunately, his voice has not held up well over the years. He still can hit the notes, but he's got a lot more gravel and stuff going on in it, you know, which is going to happen, you know, with age. It's funny because uh, I saw him uh, in Buffalo, New York. He was doing the Jesus Christ Superstar thing, and I had obviously heard a lot of stuff before that. There's a lot of live releases, and he always had a little trouble, in my opinion, with staying on key. And when I saw him with Jesus Christ Superstar, he was like perfect. It was like he had all this you know, different depth and stuff in his voice, and he stayed perfectly on pitch, so I don't know if there was issues back then with just being able to hear what he was doing, because obviously he could stay on key, but live, you know, a lot of stuff that's out there, issues, and with Eric, I'll give him the fact that there's a lot, he's on pitch, like, almost 100% on this thing, I don't know if they went back in and fixed stuff, you know, that's kind of a known thing to do, you know, people argue me about that, you know, they're, they admit that a lot of these bands, they go in and they fix stuff. I was like, why? I don't know why that's a surprise to people that they actually go back in and edit things. And they add in audience noise a lot of the time to make things sound more exciting. It's just a known thing. I don't know why people tend to argue with me about it. I mentioned that before in other stuff. And, you know, have you never been to a concert before and stuff? It's like, yes, I have. But, you know, the recordings and the releases are a little different. They go back in and they fix things. It's different. So, I mean, I don't know if they did that with this one or not. I can't tell, so I guess that's a good thing. I can't tell. Uh, but you hear, the, you hear the attitude, which is cool. He's got his own little thing. He's not trying to copy, I don't think, uh, Sebastian, although he's asked to sing the songs, you know, with the melody that Sebastian sang. So that's what people want to hear. So he has, he's, I think he did a pretty good job sticking, you know, with the original and then having his own flavor there, too. Fortunately, he's just not with the band anymore. I don't know what is, goes on with these guys, but. Out of all the singers they've had, I think he's the best replacement for Sebastian. <clears throat> it would be great if we could get Sebastian back in there and do it. I think he's still got, a, a, his voice is still good enough that I think he could go back out there and do some stuff with these guys, but I just don't think it's ever going to happen. The way they talk, they really don't like him. So, <clears throat> but <clears throat> what I thought was interesting, they went into the threat, 
and then big guns, which not huge hits, especially not the threat. <clears throat> and I thought that was like really cool that they threw those in there right from the start. Then of course, 18 in life, which Eric does a great job with. That was like his audition when he was on, uh, what was it? One of those game shows. I can't remember which one, X Factor maybe, uh, over in Sweden. I think that's, he won. If I'm not mistaken, I really can't remember. I think he won that, and that was kind of his audition song. And, uh, you know, his band, The Heat, it, uh, he actually took over lead vocals in that band as well. And uh, they opened for, he says it here in the, in the show, that's why I'm like repeating it. He says it here in the concert that he opened for Skid Row and he just wished he could have been on stage with them. And then here he is like, three years later singing for them. So that was kind of cool. That's, I can't remember what song. I think it might have been 18 Life he was mentioning it for, but I actually can't remember now. But anyway, <clears throat> then of course, Peace to Me, which they pretty much have to do. It's just an energetic song. The one I thought was a cool little addition in here was Living on a Chain Gang because that was like the bonus disc on uh, Slave to the Grind. You don't hear that one too often. So that was kind of cool. We threw that in there live, a little, you know, tasty treat for the, you know, the hardcore fans. And of course, you know, Rachel's got his, got his psychotherapy in there. And then, uh, you know, a few standards you expect here in a darkened room making a mess. And then they uh, decided to do one, you know, 10 songs in and they're doing one off of the, uh, <clears throat> their latest album, The Gang's All Here, which that's a cool song. I like that song. Pretty much like every song on that album except for one. And they actually did that one later on here. <clears throat> and then they did Riot Act, which is cool. Tear It Down. Oh, that's actually, no, that one was off the new one too. Sorry, I forgot about that one. So that's not the one I was talking about. I like that one too. And uh, then, of course, the standards they have to do, you know, we're getting to the ones that they actually have to do. Monkey Business and I Remember You, right in a row. Love those songs. Um, it's just a couple songs that just never get old for me. And I think Eric did a great job with them. And one thing I have to mention, I haven't talked about the band too much here, but these guys are tight. Um, and Scotty Hill does not get uh, the recognition he deserves as a guitarist. He is just, his solos are just like so well thought out and he plays them very well live. I mean, almost no for no live, <clears throat> like the recordings. I just don't think he gets the attention he deserves. He's like, he's not a shredder, but he writes very memorable, perfect for the song solos. Snake's no slouch either, he's really good, but somehow Scotty just has this like, I don't know, this, this knack for just writing great solos. And they sound great here. And you know, they played I Remember You and Monkey Business great. And uh, I mean, I think Snake actually plays most of the stuff on Monkey Business, but uh, I remember that solo is the one I was kind of thinking of. The, he, this guy just like tears it up. He just always does that one so well. And then the song I was talking about before, which I don't care for, the one thing on this whole album I could have dealt, done without was Time Bomb. I don't know what it is about this song, that tick, 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 ting. I just, I don't like that part of the song. I just kind of find it more of a distraction than a, an addition to the song. This is my little... It's my flavor, it's my taste, it's just what it is. I just don't care for that one. Some people may like that one, obviously the band does, because they used it right before their encore, which is, of course, Youth Gone Wild. I mean, what other song are they going to end with? And, uh, you know, energetic, fun album. Uh, if you like these songs and you're a fan of Skid Row, I think you're going to enjoy listening to them, even though it's not Sebastian singing them. Eric does a great job. Wish he was still with them. <clears throat> I think he was the best singer they've had since Sebastian, which I already mentioned, but... I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get it. Uh, Sebastian never back in here again. I personally don't want Lizzie to take the spot. I I didn't enjoy listening to that stuff, but that's just my taste as well. I just Nothing against her. I think she's great in Hailstorm and other stuff. I didn't think it fit well with Skid Row. It's just my personal opinion. Uh, but anyway, hopefully that won't happen and we'll get... I don't know. Eric's going out on tour, I guess, with Michael Shanker, which I just heard today. So... I don't know what it was he left. He said his health, but he's going back out on tour with Michael, so I don't know why he couldn't go back out on tour with these guys. He just needed a break or whatever. So I don't know if there's more to the story or not, but who knows? If anybody has any more information on that, feel free to share it down here below. You got anything you want to mention about this or Skid Row, your opinions, feel free. You know, I'm not going to argue with anybody about them. We all have our own tastes. They are what they are. And, uh, yeah, as always, feel free and like, share, and subscribe to keep this music alive because I really want, hope Skid Row keeps making music. I just hope they find a singer that, you know, that stays with them and is good. <laughs> That's all we want. Anyway, until next time, we'll see ya.